I think today is the day that I'm going to be scared silly by this. A twin turbo Lambo out on track. You join me here in Norway at the Rutskogen Motor Center, a place I've never previously driven, but it is a beautifully sunny, cold afternoon, ready to get behind the wheel of this car, the Zyrus LP1020 Stimulante. This is a fully road legalized mad machine. In fact, we're going to be joined by Radni, the man behind Zyrus later on, to learn a little bit more about this because effectively what they have done is introduce massive power immense aerodynamics, but also, very rarely, also brought it through all of the type approvals in terms of TUV for the aerodynamics and bodywork, Euro emissions as well, and plenty more. So, they're about to let me unleash behind the wheel of this on track. And then later on, we're going to be heading over to the HQ, to the facility, to see what goes in to making something as extreme as this. Now, my previous experience driving a Zyrus car was absolutely terrifying. I drove the LP1200, where they take a Super Trofeo race car, give it a twin turbocharger, give it even more downforce, and it was extreme. That was at the Dubai Autodrome with my friend Ollie Webb, as well as it happens. And uh, safe to say, that was the most intense experience I have ever had behind the wheel of a car. They then followed that up as well with the LP1200 Strada, Strada for road, but this is really a new car, a more manageable car potentially, we'll find out a little bit later on. But also when I owned my Porsche Taycan Turbo S, I installed the Zyrus carbon fiber parts on that car to give it even more of a cool look above the midnight green wrap with the Aurum gold wheels that we had. This however features so many different things that they have done, a lot that we need to go through, and uh, yeah, we're gonna see how this goes. Before we're joined by Radney to take a full look, including at the engine bay and everything to do with this, and then drive it on the road back towards their facility, which I'm led to believe is going to be very impressive, it's gonna be my turn to hop into this thing and go and drive it on this Tilka design circuit outside of Oslo in Norway. I don't really know what I'm in store for right now. What I do know, is it's going to be an experience and a half. Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Zyrus LP1020 Stimulante. Here we go then. Straight in at the deep end. Now, this is a road legal car, but we have six point harnesses, which for the track are always, I guess, slightly more reassuring, depending what you've got in store for you. Later on, I think I'm gonna be hopping into a passenger seat for a terrifying hot lap as well. But let's get started. Make sure these are all properly done. I still reach the door. You should normally close the door first. We've got Strada mode, which is effectively close to the normal road legal mode. But the crazy thing with this is that Zyrus have done so much track testing. They actually warranty the car for three years and 20,000 kilometers of track driving. And they include the servicing. They actually come to the cars for servicing them for the first three years as well. So out we go. I'm gonna pop it into manual. In Strada, you have 700 horsepower, so less than 100 up on standard. In Sport, you have 850. And in Corsa, you have the full-blown 1,090 horsepower is the number of this thing. This is a Tilka design circuit. I was recently in Tampa at the Motor Enclave, which is another Tilka circuit, who have been responsible for many of the great Formula One tracks. And this is a very technical place. 14 corners, 3.3 kilometers, about two miles, and a lot of elevation, and a track that is currently with snow off the side of the tarmac. Gosh, you feel those turbos even just taking it easy to begin with. I need to warm into this. Of course, we've got Road Legal Trofeo R tires, but we need to get some temps into those as well to make sure that we have the grip that you need when driving a car of this level of power. I'm not gonna lie, it is quite an intimidating thing to even get behind the wheel of. So I do just wanna take a little bit of time to ease into this and make sure I know what I'm doing today because this is both an unfamiliar circuit and an unfamiliar car. And I'm not gonna lie, I have the distant memories of four or five years ago and the LP1200 absolutely scaring the daylights out of me. So we will build into it, my word, when the turbos come in, even in this, you feel that kick later in the rev range. So, it's 
slightly easier first lap. Let's go into sport and get ready for a little bit more of this power and the experience of the foot down. Gosh. Okay, that's one very, very quick hurricane. That is a very quick hurricane and that is a long way from full power just while we warm into it because these corners are certainly quite deceptive at the first outing and I want to make sure I know what I'm doing. God, when you get into the turbo. This is absolutely ludicrous, but it is much more manageable than the full race car because of this road car base, of course, the way it's engineered. Keep it out here. Last time I was definitely turning too early in there. Turn in, ready for the chicanes up the hill here. It is a little bit ballistic and a little bit terrifying, which is why, like I said, taking this quite easy, just warming into it to make sure I know what I'm doing, where the track goes. It's a very, very technical circuit, this. Immensely so. When you get into the turbos, it's silly. It's absolutely silly. And I know I'm kind of babying this. This is really first go. Get some familiarity with it. First session done. It's intimidating. You can tell this has a lot of power under your right foot. I'm just gonna take a quick pause and then we're going again. It is time to go again, so back into first gear, out we roll, past the GT Black Series, which is of course here in Norway, so... At this kind of speed, it feels like a very normal Hurricane, Evo rear wheel drive. Easy, smooth gear changes, natural, flowing. Very little awareness of what you're about to experience in terms of downforce, grip, an absolute bombastic power that this offers because when you put your foot down I need to ease back into it it has a lot to give to describe it is. It's a bit of a mad experience, I'm not gonna lie, as we start to get a bit more temperature into it. Around T1, feeling that grip. A kick of the power. Ferocious, absolutely ferocious. I feel like I should try it in coarser mode, although conscious of what that means in terms of ESC as well, being significantly reduced, I need to just step it up slowly, make sure I'm comfortable and not create any drama as we come round here. Oh wow! <laughs> what the heck am I driving? More manageable than the LP twelve hundred. But these Zyrus guys mean business with this thing. They mean absolute business.
back in the pit lane, and as with any car, when you've just returned from driving on track, let it cool down for a moment. But what's remarkable is talking of cooling down, this is still totally within road temps for oil and water. You have a look back here, and obviously they've had to do a lot of work to it. And we'll go around with Radney in just a moment to understand a little bit more of all of that. But this is, <laughs> it's quite ballistic. The thing is, the acceleration is so dramatic that like I said, even on those short straights, you're up to 150 miles an hour, 250 kilometers an hour. So you're having to compute so much further down the road than I'm necessarily used to. Obviously familiarity thing, more laps would help, more learning experience. But first couple of laps out there, what a mega car. I mean, that is seriously, seriously, seriously quick. Well, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very fun and fast car. Fun and fast is a good way to describe it. So I haven't really yet explained very much about what you've done with this. Yeah. Let's kind of do a bit of a walk and talk and... B basically to just clarify it very fast, everything that is white is actually a stock Lamborghini. Yep. Uh, everything you see that is matte black or carbon is the parts that we have uh, um, manufactured and rebuilt on the car. So what's, what's fun about this is that you have actually a full GT3 on the flooring, yeah. front splitter, middle plates, and a rare, rare diffuser, plus the wing. Uh, we have uh, extra cooling for the center radiator. This is just prototype testing. Yeah. So we are testing different how big it needs to be. Uh, on the wheel archers to get the air from the diffuser out. Mirrors, carbon, because the stock ones are very heavy. This is 961 gram. Uh, we have the custom made rear ring and the diffuser full ceramic carbon brakes, 20 inch width in the rear, 19 in the front, full Erlins TTX two four-way suspension set up on it. And it's programmed with the gearbox, ECU, everything to, to handle like 10, 15 laps like you did now with not getting too loud or the oil or the water temperature going up or you feel like the car is losing the brakes or, or, or the handling quality. So, so we are pretty much trying to make the ultimate version on a road car that you can go on a racetrack and then drive it back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's safe to say it does that <laughs> yeah. pretty well. So we haven't really spoken either about the fact that you have taken this to TUV and you've done the Euro 6 emissions test. Yes. This is a, a big deal that I think people probably don't appreciate enough what that means. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, we don't feel that people don't, people don't get it, how much work it is and, and how many tests we do. But uh, basically this car has done a full Euro 6 emission test. It's done a full EMC test and, and also a DB test. And also then uh, all the change models, everything we change is for the security for the road and it's TUV approved. So the, the whole build is actually TUV approved. So there is nothing like the government or the police in any country in EU can say, no, this is not legal. So, yeah. so the car is 100% like your car over there or a <laughs> GT2 RS Manti or whatever. It's, it's fully road legal and, and that's pretty huge. And, and it is a performance car because we, we like, like you felt now when you did the laps yourself, it's, 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 made, uh, it's made to do 10, 15 laps on a track day, Silverstone, Rutskog and Jas Marina, wherever you want. So, so yeah, it's, we are really, really, uh, we are really glad and, and we like the performance it's giving. It's, it's sure. where we, we want it. I mean, in yeah. performance terms, you've about doubled the horsepower from this 5.2 litre V10. Yes, yes, <laughs> we have done that and it's running very smoothly and that's only on uh, actually 0 0.9 bars. Yeah. Uh, so so we, we have a very low pressure and, and yeah, it's, it's all because you want to drive it to the racetrack, you want to drive home, you don't want to have any failure or any problems. So what can we see back here? Of course, visually, this is very different. Uh, basi basically, it's, it's extra cooling. We have uh, three fans in the top. We have fans under the engine because the Lamborghini engine bay is very, very tight. Yep. You have a problem with heating. Yep. Uh, we have these scoops. Not everybody likes them, but again, we do we do stuff for performance. We don't yeah. do it for looks. So this is getting air down to the intercoolers. Uh, this is prototype testing intercoolers. The ones for the production will have carbon fiber um, end tanks. 
So, so basically everything you see here, as this is a prototype, we are testing different setups all the time to, to, to get the best performance and the weight. The view through the back here is insane. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we have kept it like not too staggering like a blue turbos or we have tried to keep it a little bit anonymous. But uh, yeah, another customer now has ordered one in white with orange details. Yeah. So it's going to pop off much more. Sure. But uh, yeah. And also Seriously. the wing is, 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 is giving a lot of downforce. Yeah. And we are very satisfied with the aero balance of the car now. Because our goal is that we can get clients or customers like you did now, jump in the car, drive seven or eight laps, feel that you trust the car, you're comfortable, yeah. but you're not pushing 100% because you want to learn the car, and then take it home and it's still on the road. It's not like going all over the place. <laughs> it's still a comfortable car. Yeah. You can actually take your wife or your, your girlfriend or your grandmother to the shop and back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In this, that's, that's our goal. In this of all cars. <laughs> I mean, from the rear, when you've got a, a ginormous wing like this, mm. massive exhaust tailpipe yeah. surrounds. And the GT3 Aero, it was interesting to hear what you said about the Aero under the car, because yeah. obviously you don't see that. It's you can see- It's full enclosed, everything. So it's, yeah. it's the same spec as a GT3 Evo 1 uh, that we have modified. So it's fully closed. All the wheel arches are fully closed. So, so it's, pure performance this is not just for the looks yeah this is performance because it's interesting how you've also lowered it i mean details like the badge and the embroideries and things inside as well but the yeah. the side is is really low yeah it's 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 in in where the downforce is working and we have to think about that because suddenly you can sell a car to germany and he, and he does 325 kilometers because it's limited on that and if the car is too high, the downforce don't work, it's going to be dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something often so, people don't think about. No. Like there are many, even factory cars I've driven, yeah. where when you take them to the Autobahn, yeah. you drive to 200 yeah. miles an hour, yeah. 300 and something kilometers. And, and actually that was, that was a point we had a discussion with TUV because they said, yeah, but we have the rules. I said, okay, then approve it. I will, I will lower it because it's, it's dangerous. You cannot, yeah. because the car has that downforce and it works in that area. So it needs to be approved in that area, in the end, we got it approved. But if you look in the front, you have huge, people are like telling yeah. me why you're not yeah. lowering the car. Yeah. This is the aero balance. We have load cells, we have pot meters, we have lasers. So we have all the different uh, equipment to give us where the downforce balance is. And what is fun now that you drive it now and you, you, you didn't push it, you just drive it like- Yeah, decently, but decently, not flat out. But not flat out. But now when you feel how our test driver that has been with us <laughs> in seven years is going to push it, you're going to really feel what, what the car can do. And the fun part is that we have from day one from, from Nürburgring and, and actually when you tested our prototype in, in Dubai, we analyze everything with different things. So we, we, we are look, like looking intercooler in, intercooler out. So we, we test and check everything yeah. to be sure because we give you actually three years warranty, 20,000 kilometers on and off track, which is included great. three services, because I don't want you to buy this car and I'm, I'm saying it's built of racing, it's meant for racing, but if you take it on the track, you don't have the warranty. Yep, yeah. which is a problem with a lot of modern cars. That's, that's, They're marketed as track cars, but yeah. if you drive them on the track, you buy warranty. <laughs> no. so, so that's why we are trying to give a setup that we are very secure on ourselves, that we say that, okay, this is gonna handle the abuse, um, yeah, and from there, it just goes better and better. And all of the parts that we see, the prototyping parts, are all finished in carbon for the. This will cars. all be in, be in carbon fiber because we we don't have a wind, we don't have the budget to find wind tunnels. We don't have those big facilities. We need to do tests. And for me, is that when we do the test and have the analyze there and we have the data log, we get actually what we are doing. But it takes a little bit more time to make another part, make the flip or make the whole less to see how yeah. the, because in the end, it's the aero balance in high speed cornering in speed yeah. that matters. Yeah. That's, so how those parts end, okay, if they get all leaked, that, that's the part to be fast. <laughs> yeah. What so, a thing. So yeah. am I about to jump in a passenger seat and yeah. be made to feel a little bit ill? I think you're going <laughs> to love it. I don't think you're going to be ill. I think you're going to love it. So. So I will pick, uh, tell Frederick to come and, and we can 
Let's do go a, do two it. or three laps. Go give it a go. Yeah, yeah. Here we are then, with somebody who knows how to drive this thing properly. Let's hope so. <laughs> Let's hope so indeed. You've been with Zyrus for a while now. Yeah, pretty much for, well, it's the sixth season. Yeah. So um, we've not been racing all the time, but yeah, so we've been test driving these cars and I'm developing them now since 2018. That's mega. Not many people get to only drive cars over a thousand horsepower. <laughs> well, I, do, I do drive slower cars as well, it's just very, very boring now. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go out for, I guess, a couple of laps. Yep. I will see what I was getting wrong, lots of it. <laughs> but I was adamant I'm not going after this because I'll just overshoot a brake point and it, it will be a problem. <laughs> nah, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Okay, ready to fire it up? Yeah. Let's go. Cool. Okay. Straight to Corsa. Straight to Corsa. I didn't really get all of the details. In Corsa, it lowers traction slightly, but not fully off, right? It, uh, I think, well, I, I'm not too technical yeah, or, yeah. or technically informed either, but I think in Corsa, the ESP is a bit more lenient. Yeah. I think the traction control, yeah, it's all just a bit more lenient. It's still all there. So it's, yeah. uh, you know, it's, I felt that you have to sure. physically turn everything off to get yeah. it off. Okay, let's yeah. uh, go for a lap then. Go get a couple of laps of experience in here. Yep. Figure out what to hold on to. <laughs> I'll do. Uh, I'll start a bit soft on the like first half lap just to get make yep. sure everything's tight and temps back. Tires are back to temp and brakes are up to temp and everything. Mm -hmm. Do you do a lot of testing here? Yeah. So this is our main sort of main track yep. for testing. We also do travel quite a bit. We're yeah, to, for sure. You know, Nurburgring and Spa and those and Silverstone, Brands yep. Hatch. But uh, this is sort of our home base, so this is where we do most of the testing, and also where we do. So we know we have basically we have three major tracks yeah. that we race on, and two of them, or now three, all three uh, are included in the Norwegian GT Championship. Cool. But we have two weekends on this track, so basically four, or well, it's three races per weekend, so six races in a year on yep. just this track. Okay. So it's definitely a track that we we know pretty well. Yep. About. Yep. in the under braking. Yeah. But the amount of speed it carries through there is absolutely crazy. You can feel the downforce through that corner because you got way more grip than for instance in this corner. Yeah. Where it's a bit slower so uh, the aero really works on this car now. It's quite unique for a street car. Kids, well. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's almost too much power because it just goes. Yeah. Once you lose traction, it just goes mental. But it's makes still it always too hard. I mean, these are pretty snappy cars to begin with. Yeah. But it's quite controllable. It's quite drivable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
really impressive. After that pretty extreme experience, the other side of this car, the Jekyll and Hyde, is that it's also a road car, a fully approved road car. So we should go and drive it on the road. Now it's been a long day. We've arrived here at the circuit. The sun is still up, but starting to set. And I want to go and enjoy some miles of this to see what it's like on the completely opposite end of the spectrum, to see what an 1100 horsepower car can be like if you drive it normally on a public highway back towards Zyrus HQ. Let's hop in and go see what it's about on the public roads. Well, this is a slightly different way of looking at it. Now wearing a three-point harness and on a normal road, GT Black Series in tow. Of course, the time of year, there's a lot of dirt out there, but the idea is this is a car that you can use in this environment. And one thing that's quite interesting, normally if you add 500 horsepower to a car, you destroy its regular drivability. But notice we're in sixth gear at 40 odd kilometers an hour, seventh gear now. It's smooth, easy. It's the original gearbox. Of course, there's work that has to be done to it, but at the end of the day, it's not had a massive complete gearbox change. And we're out on well the uh, track out of the uh, out of the circuit, which is certainly a bit dusty after the dry weather the last couple of days. So we'll go find ourselves some beautiful scenery and a lovely road to go see what this is actually like. As planned, we have found a very, very, very nice place to come and drive. But I do need to stress that we're in Norway. Norway treats speed limits very seriously. So it kind of goes without saying, a car with this much power will exceed the speed limit in about that much time. So we need to take it a little bit easily. What I will do though is get straight to the bad stuff, just get that out of the way. The ride is obviously very, very firm. The roads here at the end of winter, a little bit of difficult undulation to them, which it's not handling particularly well, thanks to being very low to the ground. That's kind of a, a fact of life. If you want this level of downforce and track capability, the car needs to be low, it's gonna be difficult on the road. The other thing that I would probably say about it is just the Lamborghini stuff in general that I've spoken about many times before. It's very firm, I'm not a big fan of the seats, but it is what it is, can't really change that. In Strada mode, obviously the car just constantly runs in sixth or seventh gear and it's super smooth. They've managed to make an 1100 horsepower car really easy to drive. I mean, it's like driving in a regular Hurricane. It literally is a case of just crawl along and let it do its thing. Drop it down to sport mode, keep it in auto, obviously it will hold a slightly lower gear, it will drop down the uh, throttle response a little bit earlier, and it's ready to rock and roll. And to be honest, that actually makes for quite a nice setup. Obviously you've got some more pops and bangs and sounds out of it, and this is a really cool bit of road. But you hear there, obviously the throttle like the STO, it's gonna skip around as you go over some bumps. It's just the way it's gonna work. Go into manual because who doesn't like a little bit more noise as we've got a very chopped up bit of road. And if you drive it low in the rev range, it drives like a fairly OEM stock car. I think I probably expected it to be less compliant and less comfortable in normal driving, but the reality is it's actually pretty good. I tell you what, this is a stunning place to drive. Frozen waterfalls, snow from how cold it is, getting towards the end of winter, the trees, but clear dry tarmac, and a car like this, wait for it to open up just a touch. <laughs> Second gear, pretty low RPMs, middle of the range, into the turbo boost, and boom, off you go. And off you go indeed. It, it's, it's, it's hard to really explain because, like on the track, I'm very sure the driving earlier looked in some ways kind of tame, but you have to remember it accelerates ballistically fast. So on the throttle for two seconds, and you're going far quicker than the noise perhaps makes you think, because you know the sound, if you've watched videos, right, of what an R8 V10 or a Hurricane approximately sounds like in terms of matching the speed and the acceleration. But in this, it's just a different level. The light is falling, but we've made it to Zyrus HQ. 
So that is just going to be parked up and then we're going to head inside and go for a little bit of a tour around. So yeah, this is looking quite interesting. Let's go see what it looks like inside here. We've made it back. Yeah, car is in one piece too. That was the important <laughs> bit. Yeah. I've got to say, that's quite a collection of trophies. Yeah, it's been some years we've done some racing. A few years. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we have some championships there with yeah, Lamborghinis, Gallardo, GT3 cars, Huracan, and the uh, first prototype, the turbo car that we built. So it's been, yeah. So here we are, we have small different projects. Like this one is a unique Nissan. It's a full paint. Uh, yeah, rebuilding the whole car. That's just kind of a side passion project, just get yeah, this built. Yeah. And because from very old days, I had a lot of unique Nissans, Nismos. Okay. So, so it's still in, in, in the passion. And, but it's not many, many clients who are in this category who pay the amount of hours it takes to do this. Yeah, it's a lot of love. It's yeah. a lot of love to do it's, that. It's a lot. It's a lot. So, but this guy, he really likes it and he wants to have it 110%. So it's a huge project. So, Amazing. Yeah. So, so we've got what, downstairs and upstairs? Yep, yeah, it's two floors. So we basically try to do everything in house. We do welding, we do painting, we do powder coating sandblasting, carbon fiber production design, 3D printing, scanning. Everything. So, <laughs> so we have tried to like be our little small prototype manufacturer and try okay. to do everything. Because you know, when you have to rely on other people in these deadlines, it's always yeah. problems. Yeah. So, so talk us through the cars in the workshop. Yeah, it's... this is actually our uh, second uh, Stimulante prototype uh, version okay. that will be ready in actually uh, two months. We okay. have been working on it for a long time. Of course, again, this car was also white, but uh, it's gonna, it's, yeah, so it's gonna be very, very cool. We have, we have done the teardown now, so yeah. we have been designing a lot of different parts for it. So, yeah, yeah. what <laughs> we do now is that, as I said earlier, we are very, very into data. Yeah. We collect a lot of data and we sit and, and read the data to try to fix everything as good as possible. So here, for example, this turbo from TurboSmart was not ready when we started the project doing the turbo kit. So we got the file, so we 3D printed them. Basically 3D printed the whole turbo kit, got it manufactured, sent it away for getting the exos wrapped and stuff. So the real turbos that was ready came. So yeah. So we're trying to use the 3D printing, the, the, that design a lot in our yeah. fabrication and not do everything in steel. So, well, yeah. Right. And uh, this one is the car you drive in, in uh, Dubai. Oh, this is the same car? Yeah, it's the same car. <laughs> it's uh, done now over 20,000 kilometers from it was built. So we are basically not doing anything with the engine besides changing the coils, the injectors and, uh, and the spark plugs. We want to see how far this can go as a twin turbo before it really cracks. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's the mission with it. So we basically like uh, do what, yeah, just to check and maintain. And uh, until now, until you try it, you don't know where the actual yeah yeah. We just want limit. to know because when we started the project, the engine was brand new from the Super Trofeo. Yeah. And we rebuilt everything and 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 done a lot of different testing. So. This year's color is going to be green, so we're going to okay. do this. If you heard about this Gatebill Extreme series in okay. Norway, it's a very, oh, very uh, extreme yes. series. Yep, yep, I have heard no of that. No rules. Yep. yep, it's just safety. You drive it with all different cars, <laughs> uh, so it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna go there this year. Mega! So, I look forward to seeing it when yeah. it's got its new lease of life. Yeah, it's 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 getting. So basically, yeah, we have some different paint job projects. We do the painting. Here it's just a, just a room where we do the messy work. Yeah. Different molds, different things. So... You've really got the full facility though. Yeah, we have custom made it. This was empty when we started. So here we have oh. like powder coating, we have sandblasting, we... Yeah, so 
I don't like to mess, have a messy workshop. It's, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. So try <laughs> to keep it, keep it as clean as possible. Also, yeah, here, yeah, it's just, and we have a very unique wow. ARF 34 that we have been restoring. It's, yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's getting like brand new. Everything. You don't often see it. No, like this, that. Not like that. And here we have like checked everything. This, this is, this is extreme. Yeah. Everything is changed. It's, it's gonna be brand new. So better than new. Yeah, better than new actually. So we have fully painted it. Uh, everything is, yeah. You God. see all the all the clips. Everything is changed on the car. So, so it's gonna be better than new. We are waiting for new headlamps. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it's that's uh, fantastic. This is actually the guy who came with the car, Glenn, who drove in the car. It's his car. Okay. So he's he's also into really details and yeah, you see in the behind there, like you see the whole setup there. It's it's yeah, it's, <laughs> it's nothing is. It's hard to believe that's a few decades old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like looks, but you know this this cars now it's yeah they've become serious. Kind they of they cars. are worth a lot of money yeah. uh, when when they are in this condition, like re re rebuild it. It's it's perfect. Yeah. So yeah, so upstairs there we have some some storaging and uh, yeah, uh, nice to have a paint booth because we paint a lot of molds. We do a lot of of stuff there and also we we 3D print a lot of parts now for prototyping. So this is a lot of 3D printed carbon nylon parts that we test. Yeah, some goes into production if it's good and a lot of mold so now we are doing a new evolution on the intercooler tanks okay. to remove that small issue on on different rpms yep, because okay. of the flow to the map so but being able to prototype and test and create new molds and make a new part is something that if you can do it in house yes means that you can test you can yes. experiment you yes, can push yes. boundaries you don't have to wait for someone else so, to make this yeah and and uh, that's that's the whole point what i'm i'm thinking if if, if you want to get a good product in then you need to do testing yeah. You, you can't be afraid to change, change some of the parts. And also we have another Lamborghini that we are making like the Evo 2, the last yeah. version. Yeah. That will be like a stock uh, Evo 2 cup car. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> but that's in another storage. So yeah, that's, that's basically all. And, and upstairs we have, yeah. Should we go for a quick look upstairs? Yeah, we can go. Have a quick, quick nosey what's going on up there. Yeah. What happened here? Ah, making a good movie on the ice, on the cool down, it, yep, yeah, hit ice. ice so, tab, um, so I'm about to go ice driving with my car. It can I, go good. I don't want one of those. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I don't want the souvenir. Yeah. Cool. There's a whole lot more space up here as well. Yeah. So here it's basically the carbon fiber production. We do the Taycan parts, we do the say, prototypes. I recognize, recognize yeah. some of the Taycan parts For the here. sport design. Sport design package front We inserts. do some, some custom work for other, other projects like headlights. Yeah, so here we have our 3D print area where we 3D print all the, Mega. All the custom parts to yeah. see. Yeah. It's amazing actually to see, like this is a few years ago, this was obviously completely futuristic, but still a lot of people haven't really moved up to this kind no, of technology. No, 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 you, you, you have to. Now we are, uh, we are like in the low, low level of cost because the 3D printing world is, you can use like 10 million euro if you want. Yeah. But we, we, we are in the low series, but, but it works. And it's an amazing tool because you can get the production, the testing, and a production model very fast. Yeah. Then before, like we did here, you see some big, big molds from the from the car you tested in Dubai, the first yeah. prototype. This is big, expensive molds. Yeah. And now today, it's it's not necessary anymore because you can do it with the 3D printing and get a good result. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's amazing how that's that's changing and yeah. just the amount of different parts and things you're working on and yeah we have a lot of different things we do a lot of different this is just the cover for the oil cooler we're doing it in carbon because it's too heavy yeah it's, it's no point uh, that's the mirror molds so so we do ah. still we do like billet billet yeah. molds because 
we this is the mirrors on the car now yeah yeah so the mirror goes in here all the material prepreg yep. goes on yep. here this so goes we on work top. only with prepreg and this is the Taycan mold uh, still after my opinion the nicest wing in the market three piece wing wing yep. so yes, across the boot and the rear quarters yep. and we do also also carbon fiber molds so this is the engine covers for the for the Stimulant and the Strada oh, okay. model. So this is opposite, of course, because it's a it's a negative mold. Yeah. So we have we do a lot of molds in carbon fiber when the parts need to be. You have probably seen it on the all other uh, fabrics you've been to produce. It need, carbon fiber. It gets the perfect perfect finish. Yeah. Yeah. Strength, yeah. lightweight, and looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> Which is important. Yeah. <laughs> While That's performance true. is, you're in the pursuit of performance, it still has to look good, right? It has to look good. <laughs> Nobody wants to pay a lot of money if it's not looking good. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, yeah. here it's just, uh, it was a meeting room, but now it, we just use it for another <laughs> design. And this is some parts that are waiting for the last detailing and mm -hmm. going out the carbon fiber diffuser for the Porsche Taycan. Ah, uh, yeah, so that's upside yeah. down at the moment. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so it's interesting to see all basically, of it's basically, yeah, and here it's a little, little office with a place to <laughs> chill and <laughs> stay. Nice. Cool little setup. Some amazing workshop. Wrong, wrong design parts, some crash parts. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it is. It's a, it's a, we have a lot of different. Uh, what I say, uh, we can do a lot in, in a small place, yeah. and that's that's the point. Is that you actually have an amazingly efficient setup in terms of the workshop. Yeah. It's fun actually to see how you've approached it because it's very methodical, kind of to the point to get the product you want. Because yeah. ultimately, you're going from designing and engineering and making the parts to putting them on the car that you are actually then out racing and yeah. driving with. And yeah. And and uh, yeah, it's like we we saw it very good under the. COVID pandemic, yeah. uh, it was, we didn't, we had no break. Like we, we could manufacture anything we wanted because yeah. we were doing it in house. Yeah. So we didn't get behind the schedule. So, and everybody who knows who is doing this in a small scale like we are doing or doing it in a extreme scale like Koenigsegg is doing, when you outsource parts is always a headache. So everything <laughs> you can, you can control yourself. It's, it's of course, yeah. For sure. Yeah, a little better. Amazing. Well, thank you for the tour around. Thank you yeah. for the drive earlier. Thank you for hosting the visit. Obviously, we met before, but amazing yeah. today to be here in Norway yeah. with you. Nice. So, yeah, appreciate it. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. I think we're going to wrap things up there. Some final thoughts then, having driven this today. Of course, this car being a prototype, but super exciting to understand so much more of the objective. And it's kind of cliche, perhaps, to say, but to chase the ultimate in track performance, but still make a car that's usable on the road. And it's something very close to my own heart. You only have to look at my own collection. The fact that we're here in the GT Black series to know that's the kind of thing I really quite enjoy and love. Obviously, when it comes to something like this, as I've said before, including in terms of my STO, I'm not the biggest fan of the seats inside it because my lower back after a couple of hours on the road is now a bit sore, but the sheer, let's say, extreme nature of the thing and that unbelievable power delivery yet still a car that on a day like today i've done a bunch of laps on track it's done a whole load of hot laps as well with frederick and then i've driven it a couple of hours basically in strata mode cruising back home and it just shows how immensely capable it is i love exploring a place like this as well and going for a tour around and seeing that everything that radney and the team are working on here at zyrus so what a day what a kind of continuation of the story from driving the LP1200 in Dubai to installing the carbon fiber Taycan parts on my Schmimobile to now being out here with the LP1020. And yes, the name just kind of sounds cool because it is more power than that. It is 1,090 horsepower. Mind blowing. Anyway, let's wrap it up there. It's been a long day. Awesome to drive in a new circuit. Awesome to experience this car, which like I said, limited to 24 cars. Builds are in progress, as we've seen from the cars that are around, which is really quite exciting as well. 
But I think that's it for this time. So thank you very much to the whole team here for hosting us for the day. Thank you to you guys as always for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. That's it for this time though. We shall continue here in Norway and onwards through Scandinavia. That's it, I'll see you next time. Cheers.